God. And you know when everything is framed, we'll get started. All praise to the most high. Hallelujah. Everything is good. What a blessed way to start to close out the year. We're in the 12th month, the month of Adar. And today we're at the feast of Purim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise Hallelujah. to the Most High, the great creator and king. We're on the feast of Purim, the day of the deliverance of the Yehudim from the hand of Haman. Hallelujah. The Haggai. The Agagites were Amalekites. When King Saul was commanded by the Most High Yah to destroy all the children of Amalek, what happened? He only killed a few, he didn't kill all of them. Mm. And who else did he save alive? The king. Who was the king? A god. A god. So Haman is a, it says Agagite, but he's a descendant of Haman. Okay, one of the ones that Saul let slip away. Mm. And because of Saul's disobedience, they grieved the Most High Yah and they grieved the prophet Samuel. And Samuel took a hatchet and he went to work on that guy and chopped him up to ground me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we celebrate because in this season of Purim, Haman, the descendant of Hagag, tried to turn our people into ground meat. He tried to eliminate us and cut us off from the face of the earth. But the Most High sent deliverance through his servant and his handmaid, Mordecai and Queen Esther. All praise to the Most High Yah. And this was uh, a great time of deliverance for our people. And this celebration lasted for two days. So it's today and tomorrow, and we give thanks to the Most High, because in these last days, the adversary is coming against us again to try to cut us off. But will he succeed? No. No. Yah forbid. Our Elohim is a faithful Elohim and a covenant-keeping Elohim. Can you imagine if Yah broke covenant with us? Where would we be? So even in our worst times, he was faithful to deliver us from the hand of Haman, the Agagite, the, the, Am the Amalekite. And so we give honor to the Most High Yah this day to commemorate his deliverance of our people from the hand of Amalek. Hallelujah. 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 You want to say a prayer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim. Elohe Abraham Yitzchak with Yisrael. Elohim of Abraham Yitzchak and Yisrael. Elohe Avedka Mordecai. The Elohim of the servant Mordecai. Avadka um, Asher uh, Hatzel Bene Yisrael God Haman. Thy servant that delivered the children of Israel from the hand of Haman. Hallelujah. Torah Yehoah Kizakar Tanu. Thank you, Yehovah, for thou hast remembered us. Makol ha uh, 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 ha shivot. Amongst all the weeks. All the uh, captivities. All captivities. Dang, dang. Uh, of our enemies. Hallelujah. Hatzel nu hatzel ta otano me yad ha cheref. Thou hast saved us from the hand of the sword. Yad Amalek. From the hand of Amalek. Mayad Moab. From the hand of Moab. Mayad Ammonim. From the hand of the Ammonites. Well, Mayad Esau. And from the hand of Esau. Well, Koha Goim. And all the heathen. I share your name, the name Israel. They hate the children of Israel. Told out Yehovah the code of Thank you, Yehovah, for all things. Amen. Um, Al Ehayom Hazay. On this day. A knock new uh gift to cool say fear car. We shall open that book. Uh liquor uh uh say fear uh Esther. To read the book of Esther. Uh Liz Kor uh Ko Nifla Teka. To remember all of these. Hallelujah. Um Kito Kolahem the to Lavena. Write all of them on the midst of our heart. Amen, amen. 
And teach us all of thy ways. Please, Yehovah. And feed us. Uh, uh, the manna from the heavens. Amen. Uh, and give us water. Kain. Living water. Hallelujah. And bless all of the families of Israel in peace. Thank you, Thank you for that has remembered us all the time. We give thanks before thee in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we're in the month of Adar on the 14th and 15th day and this also happens to be to be the day of the martyrdom of Matit Yahu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The martyrdom of Matthias is also today. So we want to commemorate all these things on this feast of um, Chag Purim and we want to talk about the noose of Haman. Y'all ready? You want to get into the story today? Um, hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Esther, chapter 1. What does Esther mean? Sometimes this one strong doesn't have all the good definitions. It just says Esther the Jewish heroine of Peru Persian der derivation. Cain. I believe the star, if I remember correctly. I need to start incorporating that file into the studies, Cain. Let's see, do I have one here? Yeah, you're dropping. Oh, okay. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Esther. Okay, so we're going to get the definition of Esther 156, 157. Bear with me, family. I'm pulling it up here. Um, it's 175 in the PDF, but the page number is going to say 156. Okay, 175 in the PDF. You know how you see the numbers on the side? Yeah, it says 175 right here. Oh, well, that's it. And it gives me Dalit. It ends with Dalit. It's right after that. It's, it's in there. Just, just scroll over. Okay. Next page should be. Next page. Yep. 177. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Hallelujah. Okay. Esther. Okay. Hebrew word H635. Esther. Esther, the Yehudim heroine. Uh, yeah, they said, oh, star came. So it means star. All right. Her name originally was Hadassah. But Mordecai told her to change her name so that they wouldn't know her uh, heritage. 
because she was to be queen. And if they knew she was an Israelite immediately, that might have disqualified her from becoming queen. So for the time, she had to keep that hidden from the king until such a time as this. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Mm, yeah. All right. So let's go to the book of Esther. Chapter 1. And let's start at verse 1. All right, this is the book of Esther, chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Akasueros. This is Akasueros, which came from Hodu even unto Kush. Hodu was India unto Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So from India to Africa, he had reigned extensive kingdom. Mm -hmm. Over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces. Mm -hmm. That in those days, when the king of Kashwiros sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Paras and Madai, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and Psalms chapter 40, it says the volume of the book is, do you know? Written of me, written about the Messiah. So this picture right here of a Hazarus or Aksawarosh is a picture of Yehoshua HaMashiach as the king of kings. A Hazarus or Aksawarosh, he is actually a emperor. He is over 127 different provinces. Those provinces are controlled by other kings and governors. So they all must give an account to him. And now it says, what day does this happen on? Or what year, I should say? Third year. The third year of his reign, okay? So this is talking about, uh, you know, Yehoshua said he would rise in how many days? Three days. Three days. So this is a picture of his kingdom being established oh, yeah. after his resurrection, okay? Mm. So now he creates um, a feast to celebrate his victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Verse 4. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom mm -hmm. and the honor of his excellent majesty, three days, even a hundred and four score days. A hundred and four score days is equal to one hundred and eighty days, which is one half of three hundred and sixty days, which there are three hundred and sixty days in a year plus. The four days of the change of seasons, 364. So you have 360 degrees in a circle. All right, so let's, let's just draw a picture. A picture always is worth a, a thousand words. So let's just say this here. On the screen, I'm going to put a circle. That's 360 degrees, right? And then that circle is divided into four sections, the four corners of the earth. So those four divisions add four more days unto the year. So that plus four, 360 plus these four in red, we have the first, which is spring, the changing from spring to summer to fall and to winter. So this 180 days is counting half of this year, half of this 360, but it's taking away the count of these intercalarie days, which divide the year into four seasons. So this is talking about the second half of his kingdom. Okay, he comes the first time, right? And then he returns the second time. And now he's sharing his glory to all of the faithful, all of his princes and governors and such and such, and he's having this big wedding feast. So this is a picture of the wedding feast, okay? That's what we're dealing with. Go ahead. Verse 5. So, I have here, you know, uh, 180 days is 6 times 30. So we have 6 months of 30 days each, okay? And when these days were expired, the king did a feast unto all the people that were praying Susa in the palace, both unto great and small. 
seven days. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that cycle of time, you have another seven day period, which is that year of release. Okay. Seven days in the court of the garden mm -hmm. of the king's palace. So now he's gonna it's gonna explain the 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 magnificence and the finery of this feast, but I want to drop it down. So he's making this feast, right? Um let's go down to verse eight. Verse it's eight. It's a long story. I wanna make sure we get everything. Go ahead. And the drinking was according to the Torah. None did compare. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. So in this feast, everybody gets to eat and drink as much or as little as they want. Every man according to their own eating. You have some people who say, well, I don't drink, so nobody should drink. And then you have some Christian denominations that say you can't have wine at all. But you can't forbid other people for drinking. And if your tolerance is small, then so be it. Drink according to yours. And some have larger tolerances. So when they're celebrating, you know, it's saying everybody be responsible. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So as he's making his feast, let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. So Vashti, the queen made a feast for the women. Now Vashti makes a separate feast for the women. So now Vashti is taking it upon herself to have something separate. Mm-hmm. In the royal house, which belonged to King Akashua Rosh. Well, who did the house belong to? The king. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married with wine, mm -hmm. he commanded Mehuman this time. What does Vashti or Washti, what does this represent? No, it represents Jezebel, but I'm not sure what it means. Well, I like that you said Jezebel. In one way, it does represent Jezebel, Cain. But Yehoshua is coming back for his pride. Mm -hmm. So we have a wise virgin and we have a foolish virgin. Mm -hmm. So Vashti is the foolish virgin who wants to participate in the wedding supper of the Lamb. But when Yah calls the foolish virgin, is she ready? Mm -hmm. When the cry goes out saying, the bridegroom is here, get your lamps and light them with oil. Did the foolish virgin have oil in her lamp? No. no. So when Vashti's called, she's a foolish virgin. She, she won't come. So let's go. All right. Verse 10. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married, one, he commanded Mehuman, one, this time, two, Harbonah, three, Dikta, four, and Ab, 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 Ab Ta, five, Zithar, six, and Karkas, seven ruachs of Yahuwah, before the throne of the land. Hallelujah. So now, the Most High has to send the Ruach HaKodesh to fetch the bride. Mm. Let's see what happens. The seven chamberlains they served in the presence of Akashwaros, mm -hmm. the king, to bring to bring Vashti the mm -hmm. queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. So Yehoshua has a bride, a virgin, and he wants to show her off to his father. Mm. And before the court in the kingdom of heaven. But Vashti does like say She's so beautiful that she has the privilege or the right to rebel. So what happened to Satan? You get kicked out and cast out of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 12. Go ahead. To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royale to show the people and the princess her beauty, mm -hmm. for she was fair to look on. But the queen Washti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamber. So she tried to insult her husband who gave her the beautiful garments and the beautiful crown and the, and the crown royale in the palace that she lived in 
And she did it in front of all of the sisters, all of the women. This was a major affront because her husband was extremely good to her. But she tried to pull a power move and usurp authority from the king. Go ahead. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. He was upset at this. He couldn't believe that after all he did for this Vashti, that she would insult and um, be defiant and rebellious, and not just against them, but then do it in front of the entire kingdom. Mm -hmm. So then he seeks counsel. Go ahead. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew Torah and judgment. He makes sure that he seeks people who know Torah and judgment in this matter. Go ahead. And the next unto him was Karshna, Shetar, Admatana, Tarshish, Meres, Marsena, and Nebuchadnezzar, the seven princes of Paras and Madai. There we go, that seven again representing the seven root coat, the seven spirits of Yah. Mm -hmm. We saw the king's face and was set at the first in the kingdom. What, what shall we do? Unto the queen Washti, mm -hmm. according to Torah. According to my own understanding. The Torah. According to Torah. According to my feelings. Torah. According to my emotions. Torah. According to Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because. Because she have not performed the commandment of the king. Mm. by the chamberlains. She have not performed the commandment of the king. What's the commandment of the king? That the wife should submit unto her husband as unto Adonai. Adonai. And the husband is supposed to love his wife as the church. Okay, hallelujah. So there's obligations on both sides. He's fulfilled his obligation. He's loved her and provided all of this extravagance, opulence for her. But now that she's received it, mm. hmm. go ahead. Verse 16. Mm. And Mimukhan answered the king, excuse me, and Mimukhan answered before the king and the princes, Watch thee the queen have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes mm. and to all the people Dang. that are in all the provinces of the king of Kashwaros. She hasn't just done wrong to you, O king, she's done wrong to the whole nation. And more than just the nation, because you, great king, have 127 provinces. If you allow this to go down, this is going to destroy the empire. Not just our nation, but even, this is the picture of Yehoshua, not just Israel, but even all the Gentiles who believe. This will set the wrong precedent. We can't have this. And Revelations 2, what does Yehoshua say? Thou shalt not suffer Jezebel. Don't suffer Jezebel. Hallelujah. Go ahead. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women. And it will turn the women very worldly, and then it will create um, discord between the families and the marriages. And they will start to see families fall apart. And a lot of what this world forces and pushes on our people to sow discord in the Hebrew family. So we can't allow these things to happen. What does the Torah say to do? So go ahead. But this deed of the queen mm -hmm. shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands mm -hmm. in their eyes. What did Jezebel mean? Without a husband. Without a husband. Or your husband is Baal. So your husband ain't Yehoshua anymore. It's now Baal. Or you just don't want no husband, but you want the benefits of marriage. So when she came, when, when here we have to examine the the spirit at work when the king called her he called Vashti and she said no I'm not going to come did she say I'm not just not going to only come but I don't want anymore the benefits of being your wife 
Did she say, I'm not going to come, but I want, I want to establish myself on my own, so I'm going to go build my own house. I'm going to move out of this palace. And these beautiful robes you bought me and this crown royale that you gave me, I don't even want this anymore. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Did she say that? No. So she wants the benefits of being married without being married. That's how Jezebel operates. It wants the benefits of a husband. It wants the covering and protection. But it doesn't want the accountability. And so when we look at Jezebel, it is reminiscent of Vashti. So she wants the benefits of being the emperor's wife, the queen of the empire, but she doesn't want to honor her husband. So this is a sign for us in the last days that we have to be wise virgins. This was the foolish virgin. This is the wedding feast of the Lamb. This is what this story is all about. Okay? Hashem, Joshua. Hallelujah. 17, you started talking. All right. But this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. Mm -hmm. When it shall be reported, the king Aksawirosh commanded Washi the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Okay. Likewise, shall the ladies of Paras and Madai say this day unto all the king's princes. So if Vashti or Vashti says this to the king, then eventually all the ladies of the kingdom are going to disrespect their husbands. And then that's going to create division, and then the kingdom of God will be divided. So we can't have the kingdom of God divided, we have to use wisdom. Mm -hmm. which have heard which have heard of the deed of the queen thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath mm -hmm. if it please the king let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the Torah of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered so when Yehoshua speaks what he speaks becomes law uh, yeah mm-hmm and it should not be altered. Don't change these things because the minute you change it is the minute the kingdom starts to look like the world, like Satan's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep, you know, our families tight and together. Okay. This is something I wanted to talk about, um, but I didn't get a chance to mention it yesterday. Okay. Do we have any comments before I go forward? And shalom to everybody watching. Hallelujah. We have Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And Don Maureen does ask for prayer for his father. Father Yah, in Yehoshua's name, we call upon you and bless you and lift you up this day. And ask most high that our prayers will be re received before the even at this time, even on behalf of thy servant Maureen and his father. We pray, mighty Yah of Yisrael, that you would receive the words of our mouths and the meditations of and that you would forgive us again of our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. We pray, Father, for Arim's father, even in his old age, that you would keep and preserve him, Most High. May you preserve his life. May you preserve his strength and his health. May you give him shalom in, in all of his dwellings. We pray, Most High God, that you would even bless him to be comforted by even his son, Arim, that Arim might be able to encourage him and comfort him and share the word with, with him. And we pray for Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Comforter, to rest upon Armin and his father and their family. So renew his strength and keep him whole <coughs> and open his ears to hear your voice and your word that his father may know you most high and acknowledge you even in his old age. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Hosh was mighty name. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. Love you, brother. That's it? Okay. Okay. Um, I want to pull up a picture really quick. Um, let me see. Hmm. Sleep, God, guys. 
There's nothing else you can read in the meantime? Mm -mm. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, more. Uh, one second, family. Can I save it? Okay, what I'll do is this. send you a link instead of the picture <laughs> okay <laughs> it's just one of those days today okay all right let's get first corinthians 11 about marriage and then when you get it Verse 1? Um, wherever it talks, start talking about the husband and the wife. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Mashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Mashiach is Elohim. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Mm hmm but every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of Elohim. But the woman is the glory of the man. Okay, all right. So here we have two columns here. We have male headship on one side and we have female headship on the other side. What does it say that a man, his obligation is to his wife? Cover. Okay. Okay, when a male covers his wife, what does that mean he has to do for her? Okay, so let's do one. Oops. Let's do protect. What? Else? Provide. Provide. We want to give some understanding as to why y'all set it up this way. You know, because we love our sisters and, um, and we want understanding in our relationships and with our people and within our families. All right, so let's look at this piece by piece. All right, so y'all said protect is one, right? You said provide is two. What else did you say? Teach. Okay. What else? Guide. Guide is next. Support. Support. Uplift. Uplift. Anything else, or is that pretty good? I think it's good. That's good. Y'all agree, everybody? Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just do one more for a second. Okay. This is just organic. It's, you know, whatever comes to your mind. Anything else? We got protect, provide, teach, guide, support, uplift. Believe will be under that. Mm-hmm. Strengthening, kind of like supporting. All right. Well, if y'all think of anything else, then let me know. This is what a husband is expected to provide. Correction. Correction? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say correction. The sister said that in the chat. So we have these seven things that I just got from everybody. This is what a husband is expected to do for his wife under male headship, right? Okay. Now, if we do it the way Vashti wanted it done, or the way the world
world says it should be done, what obligations does she have towards the husband? If she has a headship position, what is expected of her to provide for the husband if he submits to that? I'm asking y'all. What was the question again? All right, you see this list here? Mm -hmm. Provide, teach, guide, support, uplift. Mm -hmm. This is expected for a man to put, to do when he's married. Mm -hmm. If he has headship. Now the world tells us that it's 50-50 or if even not so that the woman should be in headship. And if the woman is in headship and the man submits to the woman, what does she expect to do for him? Manipulate. No, I mean, <laughs> you said manipulate. No, really, but I, I hear it. She would do that. What does she expect to do? But what if a woman is in headship? If we begin teaching this as a doctrine, let's say Kaya, she was now, we want to teach this as a doctrine. Oh, no. The men must submit to their wives. Right? She would start teaching him. <laughs> what is expected for the female to provide to the male as the covering? If she's the covering now, and he submits to her, what is what is her obligation to him as the head? To rule over him. Right. Just to rule over him, right? Mm -hmm. So let's put that here. Just to rule over him. You see the imbalance? You see why y'all set it up that way? Nobody could even answer. So is it because we're trying to be unfair or unconsidered to our sisters? No, the, the, the sisters walking in the room, they, they, they know and understand this. This is, this is understood. You see, when this female headship, there is no accountability. She's not required pretty much to do anything for her spouse. And that's not what headship is. What headship is and what leadership is, is guidance and all of these virtues that we lifted here, listed here. And when these things are not upheld, there's accountability for all of these things. So out of all of this, That leads to male accountability. This is why y'all set it up this way. Because if women are in headship, are they expected to protect him? Are they expected to provide for him? Are they expected to teach him? Are they expected to guide him? Maybe support me. Uplift him. No. Correct him. So let's just say rule over him and correct him. So we'll put maybe correct him. <laughs> so this is why Yah has established that order. Does that make does that does that make sense to everybody? Like is this righteous? With all of these things, there's an accountability. But when uh, a woman is in headship over the man, there there are no requirements. And her only requirement is to rule over him. But let's say she does rule over him, and she gives bad uh, leadership. Who's then to blame? At the end of the day, she's pretty much going to blame him, right? Mm -hmm. This is why female headship is not, not designed by the most high. Because this will lead to a breakdown in family. This will lead to a breakdown in marriage. This will lead to, to a breakdown in the children. This will lead to a breakdown in the nation. Not, not because a woman can't be wise. Not because she can't be virtuous, not because she can't be uh, uh, a 
understanding, supportive, and beautiful, and feminine, and all of these things. It's not because of that. It's because that, you know, I mean, we have women here. They, they're not saying they're going to do all this for their man, right? You're not, you're not going to do this. <laughs> you're not going to do this. And you, you're not even thinking about trying to do this if you're with somebody, right? If you're with some man or whatever, are you trying to look, are you looking for a man to be able to do this for him? Uh-oh. <laughs> no way, right? Let's get some comments. We got any comments here? Okay. This is, this is to gain understanding as to why God set things up this way. Okay? Ari Ben Yehuda said she will pimp him out. <laughs> <laughs> and RCLM says male responsibility responds sensibly accountability mm. okay yeah so this is why this is why this is a visual okay this is why she I set it up because none of the women want to be able to do the I don't want to do this for your man or in, in any relationships you've been in the past you weren't expected to do these things and if you were you really pretty much wouldn't loathe that man. You wouldn't want anything to do with that man, right? This is why. So this is why what Vashti did was, um, you know, not acceptable according to Torah, according to the word of, of Yehoshua. Uh, Y'all understand, everybody? Okay. Make this, I'm going to, I just want to make it clear and, and plain, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, where are we at? Oh, uh, verse 6. Oh, oh, no, so we got back to um, yes. Esther King, chapter 1. Maybe, nine, yeah, I think 19 or 20. All right. Mm -hmm. in chapter 1, verse 19. If it please the king. Let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the Torah of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered. Then watch thee come no more before King Aksawirosh, mm. and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And not only that, but now they're going to give her estate, and the things that she took for granted, they're going to give it to somebody else. This is the commandment, this is the Torah, and these in these types of matters, okay? So to protect marriages and so forth and so on, we have to be wise virgins. We gotta be wise virgins for Yehoshua HaMashiach. That means it's not just enough to say, yeah, I, I have a lamp and I'm a bride, but are you keeping oil in that lamp? Is your lamp filled with the Ruach HaKodesh? Is it lit? Do you have the light of the word? Or you just got an empty vessel. Okay. Verse 20. And when the king's decree, which he shall make be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. Right. So the wives are expected to give honor to their husbands, and the husbands are expected to protect, provide, teach, guide, support, uplift, correct. So if they're doing all of these things, the, the woman's job is to honor him, not dishonor him. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the same plea the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Menuchon, where he sent letters into all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people, after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house. Mm, okay. Every man should bear rule in his own house. And that it should be published according to the language of every people. And everybody should understand and it should be known, made known everywhere that this is the godly order. Okay, so again, this is a reflection of what? Dang, the marriage stuff of the land, his kingdom. This is why this is put here. Okay, all right, hallelujah. So they um, they look for a new wife, and her name is this, Queen Esther. So that's a representation of her here, hallelujah. 
So they seek for somebody who is virtuous and wise and faithful and obedient. And Esther is selected. Um, but before she's selected, let's see. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 11. They, they're selecting Esther. Mordecai is her uncle, and he's going to give her counsel. Mm -hmm. Esther chapter 2 and 11. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the woman's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. He's concerned about her, right? He wants to know that she's okay. Mm -hmm. Now when every maid's turn was come to go in to the king, to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished. Oh, I'll skip the line. Oh, After okay. that. After that, she had been 12 months according to the manner of the women. Mm -hmm. For so were the days of their purifications accomplished. To wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. So what does this represent? Yes. Yes. So, in another sense, being made pure, and in a sense, breaking soul ties. Everything that would bind her, everything that is not clean or uh, uh, um, impure, has to be purged out in order to be worthy for Yahushua Hamashiach. So he purges her so that she can be a faithful bride. So this is what this represents, okay? Right. 13. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the woman unto the king's house. Then they say, okay, now that you have been cleansed, now you get to go before the king and we'll see which one of you he will choose to be a, a wife. Now, Look at all these treasures here. You can select anything you want and take that to add more value or more attention or to let you find more favor in the eyes of the king. So choose anything you want. Okay, go ahead. In the evening, she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody, custody of Shashgad the king's chamberlain, mm -hmm. which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Right, so Yehoshua knows his bride by name. Okay? And he finds, if he finds the light in you, he'll know you by name. If he doesn't find the light in you, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Now with the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abi Chayil, mm -hmm. the uncle of Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Abi Chayil, what does that mean? My father is wealthy or powerful. Right. What does Chayil I mean if you put it in the feminine? Maybe queen? Virtuous. Mm. Virtuous in Hebrew is Chayil. So, a virtuous woman, Isha Chayil. Mm. So she comes from a lineage of virtue. Let's look it up. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, virtue. Let's look in Hebrew. Let's see what comes up. H2428, Virtue Kayil. What was her father's name? Abi Kayil. Abi Kayil. My, my father is Kayil. Kayil is virtue. Force, whether of men, means, resources, wealthy, an army, wealth, virtue. So Esther is a virtuous woman by nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's a king's daughter, her father is the most high Yah, in a sense, like the birth, the wise virgin. 
I'll be Kyle, my father's virtuous. Hallelujah. Go ahead. The daughter of Abi Kyle, mm -hmm. the uncle of Mordecai, mm -hmm. who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what had got the king's chamberlain. What's that mean? She required nothing. Meekness. She was perfect. She was meek. And, 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 and humble and perfect in spirit. She could have gotten all kinds of gifts, wealth, or anything to really adorn herself, to make herself find more favor in the eyes of the king. But she was so humble. She was so humble. Many people, if they had that opportunity, oh, well, yeah, give me that. Let me put this in my pocket. Let me get all this gold and stuff. You know, let me do this. Let me get some injections here. Let me get some injections there. Uh, let me, you know, do all of these things. She came as herself in purity of spirit. And that's why she was chosen. So this is like the bride of the lamb, a wise virgin. You know, today, there's so much pressure put on a lot of the sisters, and they say, oh, well, you know, my hair isn't long enough, my nails aren't long enough, my lashes aren't long enough, my hips aren't big enough, my waist isn't slim enough, this, 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 and that. Not knowing when you actually walk in the gifts that you have, that the man who is for you will absolutely love you the way you are. Okay. Don't mean you ain't got to maintain yourself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Not love you the way you are, you just roll out of bed and you got, you know. <laughs> but when you maintain who y'all created you to be and you beautify yourself in that way, your husband's going to love you. But, um, you know, a lot of times today, a lot of women are either uh, led to believe these things or they may choose men who don't value those things in them. But a godly man should value those things in you. But you got to do your part to maintain yourself as she did. She still purified herself, purified herself, and all that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's see. You can start at the top. 15. All right, 15. Mm -hmm. Now with the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abi Kayu, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing, but with Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Mm -hmm. So Esther was taken unto King Aksawarosh, and to his house royal, in the tenth month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. Okay, what happens in the tenth month? Uh, Oh, dang. I'm thinking the 10th day, sleep up. About the seventh month. <laughs> I'm looking at seventh year and 10th month, and that made me think of Yom Kippur. Uh, it's the seventh month and the 10th day. That this is the 10th month and the seventh year. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. Why? Because she, in a sense, loved him for who he was. She loved him for him. She wasn't looking for all of this wealth out of him. She could have got all kinds of jewelry. All kinds of stuff was offered to her to take with her. She could have got all kinds of gifts and jewelry and all of that, which all the other women took, but she just came as herself saying she was going to love him for who he was, not for what he had. She loved him for who he was, not for what he had. Okay? She wasn't trying to get the bag, as they say today, right? Yeah. She was trying to get the bag, whatever. She wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. More than all the birds. And because that was sincerely in her heart, she received more than every all the other all the other virgins. All the other women, she received more and became the queen because that's not why she loved him. Or why she was with him. Some people, as we say, they serve Yah 
because they love Yah, and others serve Yah because they fear Yah. Which is better? Love Yah. Even as a parent, if you have children, and you tell your child, come here, wouldn't you rather them listen because they love you versus because they're afraid of you? You want them to come because they love you. Hey, that's that's my, my, my mother. My mother said, come here, let me come, you know. Not because I'm afraid of her. Not because I'm, you know, vice versa. So that's how the Father is with us. When he says, come here, he wants you to come because you love him, not because you're afraid of him, or not because you want because you want something. Now, there was a time when Esther wanted something. And even in that, she humbled herself, and she fasted. She wanted and pled for the life of her people. It wasn't a vain thing that she just wanted. She was unselfish. So when she asked for something, it wasn't just for her own self, but it was for the benefit of others. And that's the heart that God wants us to have in this season of Purim. Hallelujah. Hashem Yehoshua. Go ahead. And she obtained grace and favor. Mm -hmm. In his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Washti. Instead of Washti. Hallelujah. So she was replaced. Go ahead. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants. Even Esther's feast. Esther had her own feast. Now, now we're gonna have the, the weddings, the real wedding supper of the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he made a release. To the provinces and a release set the captives free. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And gave gifts according to the state of the king. Mm -hmm. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet. Verse 20. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people. So now that she's queen. Does she have to listen to Mordecai anymore? Yeah. Continue. <laughs> so she didn't lift herself up in pride and say, well, I'm queen now, Mordecai. Please. Mm. She didn't do that. This is why Esther was chosen. Go ahead. Esther had not yet showed her kindred, mm -hmm. nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like it's when she was brought up with him. She still humble. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Big Time and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on the king Akash So you have two people who want to assassinate the king. Mordecai finds out about this. He informs the king. Go ahead. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Mm -hmm. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Haman's noose. The noose that you set up for somebody else is going to hang you. When you justify the wicked and condemn the righteous, the noose that you create is going to hang you. The pit that you dig for someone else, you yourself will fall into. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Mm -hmm. After these things did King Aksawarosh promote Haman, the son of Hamidata, the Agagi. The Agagite, or from Hagag. The Amalekite. Amalek. Amalekite. Go ahead. And advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So, mm -hmm, this represents almost like Satan mm. in his former glory, being next to the king. Mm. Mm -hmm. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. Mm -hmm. Halo used to have the highest rank in heaven. Under Yehoshua. For the king had so commanded concerning him, 
But Mordecai bowed not, mm -hmm. nor did him reverence. Right. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's marriage would stand. For he had told them that he was a Yehudi. Mm -hmm. So now when Haman finds out he's a Yehudi, now he really hates him because he's an Amalekite. Mm -hmm. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hand on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Yehudim. Now he wanted to kill every Israelite on planet Earth because one man didn't bow down to him. Evil! White supremacy. <laughs> he would kill every Israelite on the face of the Earth because Mordecai wouldn't worship him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Yehudim. Mm. They were throughout the whole kingdom of Atsawarus, even the people of Mordecai. You see that in the news, like, they'll say, oh, uh, you know, they put on the news, oh, uh, this guy, uh, he shot a police officer. And they will get a, a, a mug shot of somebody black. Mm -hmm. And then they use those mug shots to justify the mistreatment of every black person in America. Oh, this guy, uh, he robbed a store. So now that's justification for them to show racism against every black person when you go into the store. Now they can justify following us to a store, looking to see what we're buying, uh, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is where that comes from. Mm -hmm. So when a crime is committed by a black person today, they try to use it as a basis to malign our entire nation. And when someone white commits a crime, they say, oh, that's a lone, he's a lone wolf. You get a, a white person uh, uh, shooting up people, oh, he acted on his own. He's a lone wolf. But when black people commit a crime, oh yeah, let's see who else he's associated with. He's part of this school. And, and matter of fact, when he was in elementary school, it says he could have stood next to somebody smoking weed. They'll look all the way into juvenile records, school records and all that to try to condemn you. But when it comes to somebody white committing a crime, they always try to excuse the rest of their people for it. So you got these white people who will go into a mall and shoot up a mall. They'll go into a school, shoot up a school. They'll go into a church, shoot up a church. Are they called terrorists? Why? Because they don't want that label put on anybody white whatsoever. So a black person, a brown person, or any other person, a yellow person, an Asian person, anybody could do that. And they'll say that was a terroristic act. I can't think of, except for one exception, where anybody white was called terrorists or committing acts of terrorism. That white guy, I think in the 90s, he blew up an Oklahoma government building. Yeah. They might have called that terrorism, but nothing since and nothing before. And they shot up schools, they shoot up churches. They do all of these things and they're never labeled terrorists. Even those who killed Ahmaud Arbery, wasn't that terrorism? Didn't they terrorize him before he died? Didn't the white judge say y'all terrorized him before he died? And I want to have a moment of silence so that everyone could see what he must have felt like in that span of time that y'all chased him and killed him. Mm -hmm. So now Haman is the same way. He's mad at one Hebrew. Now every other Hebrew is guilty. Imagine if y'all judge us like that. But he didn't always want to judge us like that. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. In the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Aksawaros, they cast poor, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, 
That is the month of Adar. That's now. We're in the month of Adar. Mm -hmm. And Haman said unto King Atsawaros, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their Torah are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's Torah. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written they may be, that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. I'll take some of my own money and put it up to kill these people. Y'all need weapons. Y'all need uh, equipment. I'll even finance it myself, like Bill Gates. We want to kill all these black people. I mean, we want all these black people to have excellent health. Mm. I'll pay for the vaccines myself. Y'all want free vaccines? Mm-hmm. Y'all come on down to Atlanta, and y'all line up outside the hospital, and I'll happily pay for all of your vaccines so that you can live. The same thing. Mm -hmm. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those. That's a lot of, a lot of money in those days. A talent of silver was a crazy amount of money. And he said 10,000 talents. That's a lot of money. I don't, that's like a lot of money. They have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave what, what it. Haman said, I'll give the government a stimulus package mm. <laughs> to kill these Negroes. <laughs> Go ahead. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, mm -hmm. the son of Hamidathah, the Agagi. The Yehudim's enemy. Mm. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. So, what is this showing us? That sometimes, because of the sins of our people, Yah will allow Satan to move against us. So, Satan now has dominion on the earth, like Haman now has dominion under the king. And because of our sin and disobedience, sometimes Yah will allow the enemy or the heathen to afflict us for purposes of us to repent and fast and pray and turn unto him like Esther did in the nation of Israel had to. And then it turns against the devil in the end. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. Mm -hmm. And it was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants. Right before Passover. Mm -hmm. The 13th day of the fourth month. What happened on the 14th day of the first month that evening? Passover. One day before Passover. Mm -hmm. now, this is when the Pharisees and Satan and Judas was conspiring together to kill Yehoshua and Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Same time. Hallelujah. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. And the name of, of the king, Atsabaros, was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. Mm -hmm. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Yehudim, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Dar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. So this, what they call it, uh, martial law decree, went forth on the first day on the 13th day of the first month of the year it was decreed that pretty much a year from now we're going to get ourselves geared up and armed up and ready so that by the end of the year we're going to go kill all the Yehudim mm -hmm. so let's take our money get ourselves ready get geared up because we're going to move on these people in a year mm -hmm. and then take all of their possessions too 
And he's not just going to kill them, but we're going to take the spoil of them for a prey. And this would have never happened had Saul, <laughs> had King Saul did what he was supposed to do. Maybe this captivity wouldn't be so bad had it not been for King Saul. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be here, right? No, we wouldn't be here. Rome wouldn't be here. Wow. <laughs> That's why Yah said kill them utterly, but Saul had a better idea than the Most High. Mm. So keep doing it. Mm. Verse 14. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. A new world order. Go ahead. The post went out being hastened by the king's commandment. And the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city Shushan was perplexed. Mm. And Haman threw a party. Let's drink. Let's toast. Mm -hmm. Toast and drinks mm -hmm. on our death. They do this to this day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a loud and bitter cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Yehudim, and fasting. See, so this was the furnace of affliction that caused the children of Israel to do what? To repent. To repent. So fasting, weeping, go ahead. And fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and wailing, and many laying sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. And y'all became too much like the Medes and Persians. Y'all gotta remember, y'all are Yehudim. So he had to create another division between Yehudim and the Medes and Persians. This was that. Y'all getting too worldly now. I gotta separate my people again. Verse 4. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for her talk, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So a talk went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Yehudim to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree. We're gonna skip down some. Uh So now after this happens, Esther finds out and she's going to go in before the king and ask um, for the life of her people. So she sets up a banquet and let's go to uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. What happens on the third day? Dang. So she's prepared for his resurrection. She's prepared for his return. Who was the first there at his resurrection? Mary Magdalene. Mary. Mary Magdalene. She was cleansed like Esther was cleansed. Right? And made a wise virgin. Hallelujah. 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 Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. 
And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Mm -hmm. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? Now this is the first time she's actually asking her husband for something. She could have got all that gold and silver and all of these things, which she got anyway. But she didn't ask for it. Those were gifts that the king gave her because he loved her. So now this is really her first request to him. And she could have asked for anything. He probably would have gave it to her. But she was humble. And she was grateful for the things that she had already received from the king. Mm -hmm. What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be even given thee. Excuse me. It shall be even given thee to the half of the king. Now, no, be real. How many people? <laughs> 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 they come there like with an intent. Oh, Oh, king, say to people, wait, wait, you give me half the kingdom? <laughs> wait, let me think about this. <laughs> the foolish virgin would say, you know what, I think I might take half the kingdom. <laughs> and then, I, you know, half, at least I can save half of the people. I'll just tell half the people to come on my side of the kingdom. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is like Satan, you know, when he tempted Jehoshua. If you bow down before me, I'll give you all this, 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 and that. Jehoshua rebuked that. So she could have took half of the kingdom. But she was about her people first. She was willing to sacrifice. So this is what made her special. Go ahead. Hallelujah. This is why she had a book in the scriptures, and this is why we read about her thousands of years later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 4. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet. That I have prepared for him. So now before she even asks the king for something, what is she doing? Preparing. Preparing and what else? Serving. She's serving. She's making a sacrifice. She's making an offering. She's preparing something as an offering for her husband before she even thinks about asking for something. How many of us, when we need something from the Most High, we can say, Most High, y'all, give this to me. And he may give it, and he, he's so generous, he usually does. But for those things that are really important, do you are you willing to make sacrifices for them? This is what Esther's showing her. She made sacrifice before she even asked anything of him. She said, I just want your presence. I just want your presence. And if I found favor in your sight after I have your presence, then maybe if you can grant this petition. She just wanted his presence. That's the spirit of the wise virgin. Where the foolish virgin rejected his presence. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the king said unto Esther in the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition. What verse mean? Hey, just like that. I know I'm not looking around. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king hath said. Mm. Then went Haman forth that day joyfully, excuse me, joyful, and with a glad heart. So now he's really happy. Haman is really happy because he's like, I'm in there. I'm not only king, cool with the king, but I'm cool with his wife too. I know he's going to, I'm the man. How many people would he even let near his wife? Man, I'm up in there. I'm running this thing. That's what he thought. Mm -hmm. Who the king going to let me at his wife Esther? Nobody. Mm -hmm. I got this. Yeah. Verse 9. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. So he saw Mordecai on the way out, and now the Most High reminded him 
of what you're trying to do, you ain't gonna get away with this. You get you get warning signs before the destruction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse eleven. We got any comments? We good? Okay, go ahead. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. Let's see now, the gallow he set up, he's going to fall into. The honor he thinks he's getting is going to be his dishonor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Yehudi sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, his wife is setting him up for destruction. He doesn't even realize it, and neither does she. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. And tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou and merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Mm, the noose of Haman. Mm. The noose that you leave for somebody else is going to hang you. When you justify the wicked and condemn the just. Hallelujah. Amen. So, let's skip down now. Let's go to chapter 7. Chapter 7. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Esther? So now, after leaving offerings or sacrifices, now she's going to ask for petition. Mm -hmm. And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given in my petition, and my people in my request. Verse 4. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we have been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue. All of the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king, Atsaburos, so she petitions for her life and the life of her people, the children of Israel. That's a pleasing petition in the eyes of the Most High to ask. She could have had half of the kingdom for herself. But she chose for her people instead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Then the king, Atsawarosh, answered and said unto her, Esther the queen, who is he? Excuse me. Esther the queen, who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary enemy is this wicked Haman. How do you say adversary in Hebrew? Satan. Haman represents the time. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Mm. His honor quickly changed into dishonor and the blanking of an eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Mm -hmm. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place. King's pissed off now. And he go for a walk to clear his mind, figure out what he need to do. Mm -hmm. Into the place of the banquet of wine. And her mind was falling upon the bed where on Esther was. So Esther was still sitting on the bed and king went to go clear his mind. And when he walk out the room, Haman and jump on Esther bed. N nigga, are you crazy? <laughs> you trying to take my wife? What? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> then said the king, mm -hmm. 
Will he force the queen also before me in the house? Mm, 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 mm. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Oh, man. They put a bag over his head and said, you're about to get executed, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 9. <laughs> and Harbonah, one of the king's chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, mm. who had spoken good for the king, standing in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang on there, Haman. Hallelujah. So the noose that Haman made, he was hanged in himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the pit that others dig for you when we're walking in obedience, they fall into themselves. And Yah will justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. So after this, the, the king, he prepares a decree. That the children of Israel, he didn't say now, once the king's commandment goes forth, he can't change the decree. So what happened? He, um, yeah, he gave like the Israelites the ability to defend themselves. Yes. He made a new decree that the children of Israel could defend themselves. Which means now they can get weapons and they can fight back. Because he couldn't change his word, he just allowed them to fight back. And when the children of Israel have the most high Yah on our side and we arm, they don't want that work. They ain't want that work. Hallelujah. 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 So the noose that you set up to kill or hang someone else, you will fall into yourself when you're walking according to the flesh and with the wicked. All praise to the Most High Yah. So they had the Feast of Purim to commemorate this. The children of Israel were delivered in the 12th month on of Adar. Hallelujah. And they celebrated this for two days, this great deliverance and victory. But aside from this, today is also the day where we commemorate the death of the Apostle Matthias Matthias. So we're going to read that today. And the lost acts of the holy apostles. Matthias, yes. The martyrdom of Saint Matthias. I think it's two seventy six. Two thirteen, I think it says. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of hard for y'all to see on the screen because the words are small. On this, it's kind of hard for me to. And largely because it'll be too much moving around back and forth. So go ahead and read them. We have the martyrdom of Saint Matitya or Matthias. Mm -hmm. Here beginning the martyrdom of Matitya, the apostle of our Adonai, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Now he finished his contending on the eighth day of the month, Mabit, in the Shalom of our Adonai. Amen. Amen. Matthias is chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. Amen. And it came to pass that when Yehuda, or Judas Iscariot, had betrayed our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach to the Yehudim, that they might crucify him, Satan and his hosts were put to shame by reason of the sufferings of our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach, the king of the heavens and of the earth. And when Yehuda, the most miserable, and shameful being in all creation. The most shameful being in all creation. He has the worst torment. He's probably considered less than Satan. And Satan is the absolute worst. That's why he's the greatest in the kingdom of the world, because he is the worst in the eyes of the most high. The last shall be first, the first shall be last. But this ain't Judas worse than him. Mm. Verse 2. And when Yehuda, 
the most miserable and shameful being in all creation, had betrayed his Adonai to the wicked Yehudim. He went and killed himself and destroyed his own honor. And he was driven forth from the company of the apostles, who elected, literally placed, Matitya in his stead. And Matitya went forth and preached in the city of Damisek, Damascus, for the lot had fallen to him to go and preach in that city. And he preached to them the story of the Holy Gospel. Amen. Chapter 2. And it came to pass that when Matitya had entered into the city, he preached unto the people and said, O sinful men who are cast away in your sins and who know not Elohim your creator, why have you forsaken Yehovah, who is Elohim indeed? And why do you worship your Elohim of stone, which are the work of the hand of man? And why do you desire that all men should be even as ye are? That is to say, cast away in sin. Hearken ye unto my words, O ye men who dwell in the city of Damasek, and forsake ye the worship of false Elohim, and put away from you your error and your evil deeds, and turn ye unto Elohim your creator. Receive ye from me my words, and I will bring you nigh unto Yehovah your Elohim, and he shall make you worthy of his kingdom. Turn ye unto me, and I will teach you the Torah of the angels. Amen. Turn ye unto me, and I will give you the bread of life, that ye may live forever. Amen. Refuse ye to worship the Elohim, which are the work of the hand of man, and break through the wiles of Satan, that ye may become the servants of Elohim, who is Yehovah in truth. Amen. Verse 10. Yehoshua HaMashiach, Yehovah of heaven and of earth, the word who was in the beginning, the word of Elohim, who came down into the womb of Miriam, the virgin, who was not united unto man. Mm. He bore suffering until he had delivered the race of Adam from the dominion of Satan, and he did not appear in his glory and majesty. He had no father upon the earth like the children of the flesh, for he existed with his father in heaven, and he was inseparable from him. Mm. He comforted all by his wisdom, and it was he who took the dust from the earth and created therefrom our father Adam, the first father. He is the Elohim, in whose hands are the root coat of all created beings. And he it is who loveth them, and who maketh them meet to turn unto him. And he bringeth them back into the true faith, and into the condition of mind which is good. And he and his father and the Ruach HaKodesh are one honorable Godhead. Amen whose Godhead is one, and whose power is one. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, I command you to make yourselves to be remote from all uncleanness and to not multiply your intercourse with women so that Elohim may look upon your purity and may bless you with a spiritual blessing. He wasn't trying to hear that. <laughs> I got to get it in every day, they said, man, no. So that was offensive to a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. It may show compassion upon you in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. St. Matitya is seized and tortured. And it came to pass that when the men of the city had heard these words from him, Satan entered into their hearts with his wiles and evil deeds. And they said among themselves, Verily, this man is one of these twelve men who are sorcerers and who go about throughout the world and in all the countries thereof and separate wives from their husbands. Mm. Consider ye now how ye shall treat him. Then the men of the city were gathered together against him, and seized the apostle, and put him in prison. And they fastened him firmly upon a bit of iron, and kindled a fire beneath him. So now they're going to burn him in the fire. Let's see what happens when they burn St. Matthias in the fire. Let's see if he's going to burn up. And kindled a fire beneath him, and kept him there until the smell of his burnt flesh issued therefrom. Mm. And all the people looked on and wondered when they saw the flames of fire rise to the height of 12 cubits above the bed. Mm. And those who were gathered together and were standing there said, If this man be a sorcerer, behold, he will be destroyed. But after three days, their evil acts became known and made manifest. Mm. Chapter 4. St. Matthias is unharmed by the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
And it came to pass that when the three days had gone by, the people came to the place where was the bed of iron on which they had set. They had them burning for three days and three nights in the fire. And the fire was 12 cubits high, reaching up really, really, really intense fire. The people came to the place where the bed of iron on which they had set the holy man and burnt him with fire. And they, they found, found him alive, alive and with, with his, his eyes open, open, and the, the fire, fire had not touched, touched his body. body. Praise Yah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they found him safe and sound, and harm had not in any way touched him, and there was no smell of fire upon him, and his garments had not been burned. Oh, not burned either. Praise Yah. Verse 4. And when the men of the city had seen this wonderful thing, and how Elohim had shown compassion upon his apostles, Many of them believed upon Elohim, and they said, This man is an Elohim. And the holy man continued to lie upon the bed until seven or eight days had passed. Let me just, uh, let me just put this pillow under my head. And <laughs> <laughs> just lay there for seven days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And all the men of the city, who were of the true faith, believed in the words of the apostle Matityah. But there remained some who did not believe in his word. Some, no matter what you say and no matter what you do, they're still just not going to believe. Just like they've seen Yehoshua raise people from the dead. Mm. The blind got sight. The, the, the deaf can hear. The lame can walk. And they say, what are you doing on the shot day? Verse 7. Now for 24 whole days, the fire continued to blaze under the bed. Hallelujah. Both day and by night. And our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach, upon whose name his apostle called, did not permit any injury whatsoever to come to him. For he was suffering for his name's sake. Sometimes Yah has people suffer for his name's sake. A lot of us are of the Christian mentality that every time you go through a hardship it's because you did something evil. But that's not always true. That's why we have to use discernment. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. But we have to test the spirits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In an evil situation, you want to examine yourself. Either way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. The men of Damascus believe in Yehoshua. Amen. And after these things... He brought, excuse me, he brought him out of the fire. He brought him out of the fire. And the people saw that his body was unharmed, and that his face was like the face of a child. Mm. Innocent. Innocent. Then all those who looked upon him said, This man who was in the fire is not a sorcerer, for his whole body is unharmed, from the hair of his head even unto the nails of his feet. Can you imagine watching that on the first day and he's and the fire is not burning. And you watching. Then it starts getting night. You go, like, all right, guys, I'm going to come back tomorrow and see, you know, if he's still in the fire. Can you imagine? And they come back day after day after day. If that don't turn your heart to the most high, then what will? So many people believe. But that, that had to be amazing. Because... In, in 10 minutes, in, no, less than 10 minutes, in one to two minutes, that should be it. Maybe less, maybe 30 seconds of fire that high, somebody thrown in. But people are coming back day after day after day, from sun up to sundown. And then they come back and they go to sleep, they go home and come back the next day. Let me go see. And he's still there. That's the hand of the Most High, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and in that same hour, all the men of the city and of the districts round about believed, Amen. and they cried out and said, there is no Elohim in heaven or in earth except Yehovah Elohim of Matityah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The apostle of our Adonai, Yehoshua HaMashiach, who delivered all those who trust in him and those who believe in his holy name. And after these things, Matityah. The blessed apostle commanded the people to destroy all the temples of the Elohim 
and to throw the Elohim into the sea. And no remnant whatsoever of them could be found by reason of the evil which the people wrought upon them. Then Matithiah built them an assembly in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Ruach HaKodesh. And he immersed the people of the city, men, women, and children, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. The Holy God here. Consubstantial, indivisible, and unchangeable. Verse 8. And after he had immersed them, he consecrated an assembly for them, and he admonished them, and gave them the commandments of life. And he taught them the Torah and the gospel. Then he departed from them. The what? The Torah and the gospel. You mean that, that's the Old Testament too? Yeah. I thought those apostles did away with the law. Uh -uh. You mean he taught the, he taught them the, the, the Torah in Damascus? Uh, yeah. Huh. Hallelujah. That's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 9. And he taught them the Torah and the gospel. Then he departed from them. And they all set him upon his way in Shalom. For he had taught them the knowledge of the truth. And he had taught them the path of righteousness. And he had brought them forth out of error into the knowledge of the faith of Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Adonai. Amen. The last chapter, the death of St. Matthias. He's actually one of the apostles who was not put to death, but he died because Jehoshua took him up. Hallelujah. Chapter 6, the death of St. Matithia. And after he preached and told the story of the gospel, he slept a good sleep, and he died in one of the cities of Yehuda, which was called Philalion, on the eighth day of the month, Magabit. And the grace of Elohim and of the lover of men our Adonai and Elohim, Yehoshua HaMashiach, to whom be praised and honored forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High God. Hallelujah. Let me remember Yehoshua and his apostle Saint Matitya on this day on the Feast of Purim. All praise to the Most High God. How'd you like that? Beautiful. Beautiful, okay? Yeah, all of these stories are fantastic in here. This is the lost acts of the holy apostles. This is where you're going to find this information with the restored name of the, of the Father and of the Son. And this comes from the Ethiopian text, the Hebrew text. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're grateful that we commemorate the apostles on this day. I want to read one more portion of this book. Let's read the prayer of the holy apostles. All right. Let's go to the end where it says... Um, the colophon of the Ethiopian scribes. Oh, at the end, there you go, right there. Here ended, you see that? Yeah. Colophon of the Ethiopian scribes. Here ended the book of the contendings of the twelve apostles and of the seventy-two disciples. Amen. The twelve apostles prayed, saying, we have toiled and have been scourged for the sake of thy holy name. Mm. And what shall our reward be? And our Adonai said unto them, Ye shall pass boldly into heaven at the last day. Amen. And the apostle said, Whosoever shall put his trust in our prayer, and shall celebrate our commemoration, and shall write the book of our contendings, what shall his reward be? Mm. And our Adonai said unto the twelve apostles, Whosoever shall put his trust in your prayers and shall celebrate your commemoration and shall write the book of your contendings and your martyrdoms and your sufferings shall pass boldly with you into heaven at the last day. Amen. And now, O oh, our brethren, let us celebrate their commemoration and put our trust in their prayers so that we may find with them at the last day a portion which shall endure forever and ever. Amen and amen. May Elohim, through the prayers of the apostles, have mercy, alike upon him that wrote this book, and upon him that had it written, and upon him that readeth it, and upon him that interpret, interpreted it, interpreted it, and upon him that hearkened unto its words forever and ever. Amen. 
and amen. So be it. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, we be able to even hear the words of this book. If we hear the words of this book and obey it, we get to pass boldly into heaven at the last day. All praises to the Most High God. Hallelujah. 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 I want y'all to say a prayer to close out. Hallelujah. Baruch Atah, Yehovah. Blessed are you, Yehovah. Ha Elohim Hagado. The great Elohim. Ha Elohim Hatadik. The righteous Elohim. Ha Elohim Hayashah. And the upright Elohim. Baruch Atah Adonai, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Blessed are you, Lord, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Moshiach. Our Savior. Kol todot l'ka. All thanks unto you. Le olam wa id. Whatever and ever. Toda la yom hazeh. Thank you for this day. Chag hapurim. The feast of Kurim. La nu liskur ma'aseh abotenu. For us to remember, what was the last part? Ma'aseh. The acts. Abotenu. Of our fathers. Aliyah. Le gam la nu liskur. And also we remember Matitya, Matthias, Hazadik, the righteous. Amen. Torah, Yehovah. Thank you, Yehovah. Asher Natasha Martha. For you protect us. Mikora. From all evil. Weyata Natsarta. And you preserve us. Ata Natsarta has Seferim Ha'ili. And you protect us from you preserve us. And you preserve us. Ha Seferim. I ain't gonna give my father. Sefer. From the accounts. You preserve these books. And you preserve these books. La nun the crow bound. For us to to call on them. To read to read them. Aliyah. Barik na kulanu hayom. Bless us all in this day. We call the name Israel and all the house of Israel. Kolanu, all of us. Osim, ma uh Toratka, all of us. We do your law. Barik na kolanu ba makusha. Bless us all, please. Salach na utanu, and please forgive us. I'll call harash ya nafnu asinu on all the evil which we do. Lefaneka in your presence. Yom yom, day by day. Salah na ko ha anashim. Please forgive all the people. Ma amenim bi Hoshua Hamashiach. And the, the believers of Yehoshua Hamashiach. Wa bakusha. Please. Ba shem arona Yehoshua Hamashiach. In the name of Lord Yehoshua Hamashiach. Anachnu notnim. We. We give. Ko to Hilo. All praises. Call to dope. All thanks. Call Habera Kok. All blessings. Laka. Hallelujah. Le Ola Wai. Ever and ever. Bashem Yehoshua Hamashiach. Bashem Yehoshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Very good. Excellent job. Excellent job. Hallelujah. We bless the Most High and we thank y'all for joining us during this feast of Purim. And we have the added blessing of hearing the martyrdom of St. Matthias. Hallelujah. What a wonderful story. Is that your first time reading this? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we pray that this edifies you and this blesses you. And that when you're tried in the fire, that you come out blameless and purified like gold. May God bless you and keep you. Till next time. Shalom. 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 Shalom.